Hi guys, welcome back to the course. So in this lesson, we're gonna have a look at creating the database. We're gonna create the database on MongoDB Atlas. We're gonna to connect to the database in our application, and then we'll probably end it there and move on to another lesson. So if I switch over to my project again. So um, this is where we ended up last time. Um, we have a nice express server running, but at the moment we're not connected to any database. We're not kind of um, collecting any data. We can't read or write any data until we set up our database. So if I open up the browser again, what I've done is I've logged into MongoDB Atlas. Um, I'll let you guys set up your MongoDB accounts. If you go to uh, mongodb.com, um, if you type in MongoDB Atlas, Google it, whatever, you'll find out how to create an account. Um, once you've created your account and you've logged in, um, we're going to create a free database. We're gonna use the free tier um, and we're gonna get started with that now. So this is my dashboard at the moment. Um, we're going to go to this drop down on the left hand side I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to call that project full stack react recording. I've got another database for when I was building the project. Um, for this one, I'm going to call it real, uh, recording. You can call your project whatever you like. This is what I'm going to go for for now. Um, add members and set permissions. I'm just going to skip this for now. I'm just going to create the project. So once we've created the project, it will take us into our project on the um, Atlas uh, dashboard. I'm going to click build a database. And inside these choices here, let's get rid of this pop up here. Let's see if that disappears, yeah. So inside of this, um, inside of our MongoDB Atlas dashboard, you can see there is a free tier here, a shared tier. So I'm gonna click create. And then it will ask us uh, what provider we want to use. I always use AWS. You could use Google Cloud or Azure. It's entirely up to you. Um, the region I've got selected is Ireland, seeing as I'm based in the UK. Um, but you can see that there's free tiers elsewhere. Um, if you're based in the States uh, or anything like that or anywhere else in the world, select a, uh, I'd recommend selecting a database that's closest to you. So I'm going to choose Ireland. I'm going to leave all these other cluster options as they are. We're on an M M0 sandbox, which is a free shared um, database. Um, additional settings, well, it's not a shared database, it's on a shared server. Um, the cluster name, I'm just gonna leave as cluster zero as it is and click create cluster. The cluster creates a few minutes to, it uh, takes a few minutes to build. You can see that here in the pop-up, uh, the process takes about three to five minutes. In the meantime, we'll be prompted to create a username and password. So this username and password will be uh, what we use to connect to the database in our application. So make sure it's something memorable. I'm just gonna call my username Matt. And for the uh, for the managed passwords, I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna go to a password generator here. A strong password generator, let's do something like 16. You guys can choose obviously whatever password you want. I'm just gonna copy the, the, the password that's created here, enter that in the password there and I'm gonna select create user. Okay, I should have, uh, I'll edit that. And I'm gonna change that password again. I'm gonna remove any special strings from my password generator. It was telling me there that uh, I've got some things that are URL encoded, we don't want that. I'm just gonna use a basic string password with no special characters. I probably recommend the same to, to prevent any issues. So I'm gonna update that password there. Um, and then I'm also going to just go to my uh, environment or uh, quickly, I'm just gonna paste that here, this password that I've uh, set up, um, just so I don't lose it. I'm gonna go back here. So where would you like to collect, uh, connect from? I'm gonna connect from my local environment. So I'm gonna add my current IP address that it says here. This basically means that you have to whitelist the IPs you want to allow access to the database. Um, we want our current IP, seeing as we're building this locally, um, but I'm also gonna set up in a second, I'm gonna um, allow access from anywhere that um, kind of omits any hosting issues. So when we go to host the application, um, they can, all of the um, applications, wherever their servers are based and their IPs, they can connect to our database as well. So finish and close. Congratulations on setting up yet. Go to databases. And we basically got to wait for our cluster to be created. So I'll pause that and I'll come back uh, once the cluster has been created. Okay, so my cluster is now finished building. Uh, it's all ready to go. Uh, before I go to the connect button here, I'm going to go to network access on the left-hand side. You see the IP addresses here? I'm going to add an IP address and I'm just going to click allow access from anywhere. 
that makes it easier for us, as I said, uh, to connect to uh, different hosting platforms and whatnot. So I'm going to go back to databases on the left-hand side whilst that's pending. And then I'm going to click the connect button here. And it will ask us uh, basically how we're going to connect to this database. We're going to connect with, your, with the application. So I'm going to click connect your application. And then this is going to give us a URL string that we're going to use to connect to the database in our application. So copy this, um, this URL here. And then we can move back to our application. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to set up um, a new environment variable. I'm going to call that mongo underscore URI. That's going to equal what we just copied. So I'm going to paste that in there. And you can now see that we've got that URL string that we're going to use to connect to our, our database. So this down here was the password I pasted earlier. Where it says the, uh, where it's got the arrows password, you need to replace that with your password. If you don't, you won't be able to connect. So I'm going to paste that in there. Remove that extra space there. And you can see at the end, uh, if I scroll along, it says my first database here. That's going to be the database name. We don't really want that as our first database name. It's just kind of a placeholder that they uh, that Mongo uh, uh, give to us. So I'm just going to call that main. So then our database name would be main. Um, you can call it whatever you like. It doesn't really matter what the database name is, as long as it's consistent when you're connecting to it. So now that we've got our Mongo string there, I'm going to go to server.js. And we now need to connect to that. Um, we now need to connect to our database. So to do that, we need to install a new package. I'm going to uh, install a package called, uh, I'm going to do it by going npm space i, and that package name is mongoose. And this is basically a package that allows us to connect and kind of talk to our database, uh, our MongoDB database. So npm i mongoose, that's going to install. I'm then going to boot up the server again. So I'm going to do npm run server. So our, our server's now running again on port 5000. Um, the, good, the one thing to note is that when you change your em, .env file for your environment variable to be ready and usable, you need to first restart your server. So in this case, I mean, we didn't need to restart the server because it wasn't running. Um, but if your server is running, it needs to be restarted before that new variable um, can be used. But we've already done that, so we don't have to worry about that. So what we're going to do is inside our server.js, we need to import mongoose. So const mongoose equals require and then in quotes mongoose and then down here above app.listen we're going to connect to our database so we're going to type in mongoose.connect rounded brackets we're then going to paste in our we're then going to give it our mongo uri that we just set in our environment variables so that'll be process.env.mongo underscore uri and then we're going to wait for that to connect and then the dot then we're going to make use of dot then and we're going to open up a uh, arrow function just an empty arrow function with no parameters and we're going to console log inside of there connected to database so that'll then tell us that we're connected to the database i'm then going to copy and paste this app.listen stuff i'm going to put that inside of this uh, in app uh, inside of this mongoose.connect. So basically what it will do is it will connect to our database first and then it will um, listen and start the express server. So you can see that here. It first console logs cons uh, connected to database. Then it also um, logs server running on port 5000. So it's waited to connect. Then it's uh, started listening to port 5000. Before this closing bracket here, I'm going to add a dot then. I'm going to do curly brackets and then we're going to make a, a, oh, sorry, not a dot then. We're going to do a dot catch. So dot catch, we're going to do uh, a parameter called error. I'm going to do open up our function, our arrow function. And we're just going to console log the error. So basically, if there was ever an issue connecting to the database, this catch block here. So when I saved there, I'm using um, something called Prettier, an extension called Prettier. So you'll see that it formatted my code. You can install Prettier. It's a very handy, um, it's a very handy um, package. You can go into your settings and you can allow it to format on um, save. So that's an extension on VS Code that did that nice formatting for me. So if you ever see my code jumping around in the course, that's because of Prettier. Um, and it does allow you to, to create clean code every single time. Uh, reformats your code for you. Um, there's lots of tutorials online to show you how to set up Prettier and get it to format on save 
um, so I won't do that in this tutorial. But yes, yeah, so this catch block, if, uh, catch block, if there's error, ever an issue connecting to Mongoose, it'll console log the error for us so we can try and work out what's going on. We haven't had any issues, so it hasn't hit that catch block um, and everything seems to be all right. So the fact that we've connected to our database and we've created our database, that's quite a good step in our tutorial. Uh, the next stages of our tutorial, I think we need to look at writing um, our, our first kind of bit of data to the database. We'll look at creating a user and sending that through um, and storing it. And then we can also see on the dashboard, we'll have a look at that data being stored in our database and see how we can kind of interact with it. So I'll end the, this uh, lesson here and I'll catch you in the next lesson. Cheers.